Welcome to Cheer Country. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be looking at Netflix's Cheer, Where Are They Now? I'm really nervous and also like kind of scared for what I'm going to do after cheerleading because it's been a part of my life since I was little. For this list, we'll be looking at the main players from the Netflix docuseries and seeing how their lives have changed since filming Wrapped. If people didn't give me a second chance, I would not be here. Like, last year I didn't really have a lot of unity with a lot of people, and I really burned a lot of bridges, and I'm getting there, and we're coming back. Number 10, Andy. Like, bump it faster. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. this is the slow version yeah, that you I told know. me. Okay. We saw Andy in the series acting as Coach Monica's second-in-command and the team's choreographer. He stayed in his position and continues to help the team. If you follow him on Instagram, you'll see that post-Daytona, he took some time for himself and did a little bit of globetrotting. Capenna, the student assistant coach who used to be on the team, is also still working with Navarro at this time. So if there is a second season, fingers crossed, we'll see both of these guys again. We're trying to get this part down, that way we can put the rest of it together, but we're still working on something that we already worked on earlier today. So let's keep the talking to a minimum. Number 9, Monica. Everyone has to be held accountable for everyone on the team. If you've seen the show, you probably wouldn't expect Coach Monica to be anywhere but where she does her best work, pushing the Navarro College Bulldogs cheer team to their absolute limits. It's not ideal to switch people out at this point, obviously, but it's going to be a much bigger push. We're going to probably really have to push ourselves this week. And you'd be right. While she may have been a divisive figure on the show, she's now a public figure who has been doing the media rounds and giving plenty of interviews as well. I mean, I've done this for 25 years and I just, even though I thought it was a temporary job, I just can't see myself giving it up. I'm just so passionate about these kids and yeah. I love doing it. If you want to keep up with her efforts with the team, be sure to give her a follow on Instagram because you'll get a behind the scenes look at the current goings on. Number eight, Sherbs. Sherbs, do the beginning part. It's not very easy finding flyers that have that experience. Mackenzie Sherburn is best known on the series by her nickname, Sherbs, and on the show, we saw the devastating injury that caused her to miss out on the championship. <laughs> but don't worry, because she has fully recovered now. However, she has also sadly moved on from Navarro and changed schools. She's now at Lubbock's Texas Tech University and working with their squad, where she continues to show off her high-flying stunts. Check out her Instagram for plenty of photos and videos of her performances with her new team. Yeah. Number seven, Austin. We saw Austin experience a horrifying injury in the final episode of the show at the Daytona Championship, but we're pleased to report that he's fully recovered. In fact, he followed a similar path to Sherb's, recovering from his injury and leaving Navarro College. Not only that, he ended up at Texas Tech University too. The old teammates are cheering together again and often end up in each other's social media posts. In mid-January 2020, he posted that the two of them were heading to Daytona for their third time together. Number six, Allie. This is my fifth concussion. It's nothing really new for me, but in the grand scheme of things, it's cheerleading and that's usually what happens to get it perfect. We saw Allie step in after Sherbs was injured, despite the fact that she seemed to lack some of the confidence that it took to succeed. But succeed she did, and now she has been enjoying the limelight that has come along with starring on the show. I mean, it's, it's good. Are you good? Yeah. That includes taking advantage of being something of an influencer on Instagram. She has also been doing the press rounds with some of her other teammates who appeared on the show. She's at Navarro for another season and has said that she intends to continue to pursue cheerleading for several more years. Thank God. Number five, Jerry. Y you are uh, Jerry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jerry. Jerry was a fan favorite figure on the show. One of the most uplifting moments of the series was when Jerry found out he had received a scholarship to the University of Louisville, which had been his dream. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> I did not think I was going to get a scholarship from them. That's been, I know, that's huge. But interestingly enough, after spending a semester there, he found himself back at Navarro. He did some cheering on the co-ed team at UofL, even receiving accolades for bringing energy to the crew, but it seems that his heart was still back in Texas. He said, quote, I wanted to go back to that family aspect of Navarro, which makes a lot of sense. On top of that, he's also been cheering for the Cheer Athletics Wildcats. Number four, Lexi. I don't like issues or drama or any of that. So yeah, in this sport, I've usually been to myself. From the beginning, Lexi seemed like something of an outsider at Navarro who didn't mesh with her teammates. 
but we watched her full arc throughout the show as she became one of the crew and bonded with her fellow cheerleaders. It did take a while, but I like everyone and I know all they want is the best for me. Sadly, in the final episode, we saw that she was caught with illegal substances and was therefore removed from the team. Even though I'm not necessarily a Navarro cheerleader anymore, I still feel like I'm a reflection of that program. This story has a happy ending though, because as of January 2020, she's back on the squad. We wish they had been able to show that in the doc. Number three, Gabby. We have so many different kinds of people, but we all want the same thing. Even before Cheer hit Netflix and became a massive hit, Gabby Butler was a star. She had a massive online following in the cheerleading community, and expectations were high for her because of her fame. It's like this adrenaline rush that you get that you're just like, wow. It's scary, but you just have to trust your teammates. Her parents pushed her hard, which is something that has changed since the show aired, partially because of the negative response their behavior received. I'm going to be so tired if I do that. I'm so delirious and my voice is gone. When she appeared on Ellen, she said that her parents are now giving her some independence. My parents were like, wow, maybe we do need to let her be more independent and let her make her own decisions for herself. And I really just think that it was great for me because I really started to love myself more and being like, I need to be more positive about myself. Like she said in the show's finale episode, she has left Navarro but is still cheering, currently training with Top Gun Cheer. Number two, Ladarius. When I come here, I expect you give 110% just like I'm going to give 110%. Another figure who was somewhat divisive on the show was Ladarius, who had an extremely difficult upbringing, but in turn brought plenty of drama to the mat. You do not want to go up there and just be acting stupid. Like, be very serious, because if, if you're distracted, you are not going to do what you need to go do out Business there. Business trip. I feel like we need You've to worked a whole year for this. In the last episode, we saw him coaching some young cheerleaders, but he wasn't sure what was coming next in his life, even considering the military as an option. Five, six, seven, eight, one. Really, Kamey, you gonna cheat? He opened up on Ellen about how the show helped bridge the gap between him and his family when it came to his sexuality. After the show, I felt so much better because I got away I got away from all my chains. I felt like I was being held down and I felt like I was finally free, that I could fly. As of 2020, he's back at Navarro for another season cheering on the Bulldogs. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Morgan. I felt like I wasn't good enough. I wasn't like important to anyone. That's what I felt like. Morgan had one of the most crushing backstories on the show, as we learned that she and her brother were abandoned as children and living in a trailer. Luckily, her grandparents saved her and inspired her to have aspirations for herself. My grandparents are the biggest difference, obviously. If it were not for them, I would probably not be in this world anymore. That's how she ended up being mentored by Monica, even though she didn't necessarily have the raw skills when she was recruited. Morgan, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I was just like we saw at the end of the series, Morgan is returning for another year with Navarro. And honestly, we kind of can't picture her anywhere else. I feel like I still have a lot to learn from being at this program. And I just can't imagine being coached by anyone besides Monica. So I'm like, I'm not even going to cheer anywhere else. Maybe she'll eventually be second in command to Monica. We can dream. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.